How does Dan get to assist recompression facilities? What does it do to help them with their job? Let's find out together. Welcome to another Get to Know Dan series. I'm Dr. Franz Cronier, founder of Dan Southern Africa. And if you want to know more about what Dan does and is involved with, please do consider subscribing to our Dan Southern Africa YouTube channel and visit our Dan blog and get the latest news so you don't miss anything. Okay, so how does Dan get involved and help chamber facilities. Well, Dan does a number of things. As you know, many healthcare facilities are facing increasing pressure to control costs and the availability of hyperbaric chambers for diving emergencies is becoming especially limited. In fact, there are only approximately 1,375 chambers in the United States, of which only two are dedicated solely to divers. Only 130 of those accept patients on an emergency basis. And in Southern Africa, there are basically two hyperbaric facilities that are available 24 hours. So there is a lot involved in getting an injured diver to an appropriate recompression facility. But since 1993, Dan's Recompression Chamber Assistance Program has assisted recompression chambers to ensure that safe quality care will be made available for divers experiencing symptoms of decompression illness or the bends. For 20 years, this program has focused on smaller, independently operated facilities in popular dive destinations around the world for the benefit of the entire diving community. With your help, we can keep these chambers door open and assist them to be available when they are desperately needed, because it is expensive to keep these chambers available 24 hours a day. Some couple of fast facts. 150 chambers have been assessed around the world for hazards and risks to make them safe. About 200% improvement has resulted in the chambers being safer of Dan introducing these recommendations. 50,000 is the average cost for a remote chamber and staff training program and Dan supports several of these. In fact, the training we provide to chamber attendants and chamber operators through the Recompression Chamber Assistance Program, or RCAP, has dramatically improved safety and reduced the risks associated with recompression. This translates to the chambers not only being more readily available worldwide, even though I mentioned that they are fewer and fewer by the day, but chambers have formally trained staff that are experienced and are able to assist divers and that you can have confidence that you are in good hands. The goal of RCAP is to assist these recompression chamber facilities through operational assessments, training and equipment, evaluations, providing replacements in certain cases of worn components and even teaching them how to maintain their facilities, not to mention treating injured divers. So how does Dan approach chamber safety? Well, we basically have a four-step program that improves the safety of these chambers we mentioned. We evaluate firstly. That's a thorough review conducted to assess a chamber's functionality as an intrinsic operating facility with its procedures and level of staff training. Then, secondly, we report, which is a detailed risk assessment report compiled for that specific chamber and giving them relevant recommendations. Thirdly, we train, 
The chamber staff is trained and advised of the best practices and treatments upon findings of the on-site evaluation. Fourthly, we monitor to ensure adherence and maintain relationships with chambers. Dan routinely communicates and sometimes does on-site inspections of chambers to continually assist in monitoring that the facilities remain in ship shape ready to assist injured divers. So what about the chamber network then? Well, believe it or not, there is one. And if you are a diver and have studied the treatment of decompression injuries or diving injuries in general, you'll know that hyperbaric facilities and recompression play a major part. Dan frequently consults on the care and transport of injured divers to recompression facilities for suspected decompression illness, whether it's to a hospital or to medical evaluation, which is always the first go-to, and following the diagnosis of decompression illness to the closest appropriate recompression facility. Divers often pass legitimate healthcare facilities while on their way to a recompression chamber that may not even be open, which is why we encourage the emergency medical services to take divers, even if it seems suspicious that they have a diving injury, for medical assessment first, because there are a number of conditions like stroke and heart attack that may mimic decompression illness and will not do well in a recompression facility, let alone the fact that the recompression facility may not be open. Why doesn't Dan provide chamber contact details? Well, simply because hospitals and urgent care facilities aren't always available, you won't always get in contact with a person who actually will be in charge of the treatment. There may be other necessary examinations or prior planning that needs to take place, including stabilization of an injured diver before being transferred under medical supervision to a recompression facility. This vastly increases the outcome of the treatment. There's nothing worse than being on a holiday and not only spoiling the holiday, risking your health and having everybody concerned, but it's even worse if you do not get the appropriate treatment you need. The assistance of Dan that makes it possible for you not only to get to proper assessment, but ultimately to appropriate treatment. And some of the benefits that Dan offers even allows family members to visit injured divers if they are in remote locations. Most divers that would go straight to recompression facility may find it closed. And that's why again we reiterate it's most important to maintain the basics. ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation and 100% oxygen, calling or making use of the local emergency medical service if it's appropriate or available, and then transporting the injured diver to the closest medical assessment facility. Again, I emphasize medical assessment prior to transporting to a recompression facility. Dan's 24-hour emergency hotline number is plus 27 828 10 60 10, both locally and internationally. If you're not sure about the symptoms or what is going on after days of diving, it may be wise to just first call Dan and get medical advice. The emergency hotline is also a medical information line and so the information provided may ultimately assist in determining whether or not a case is likely to be decompression illness or not. And the number for regular routine calls is available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. but the emergency number is available 24 hours a day. What about chamber referrals? Well, not every chamber actually makes the cut of being appropriate for the treatment of injured divers as far 
as Dan is concerned. The last thing we want to do is to send divers to a recompression facility that is substandard. And that is why we are so interested and invested in improving training and monitoring the quality of recompression facilities. So as you can see, Dan takes diving safety very seriously and partners with chamber facilities around the globe and has created a network capable of providing assistance to divers throughout the world even when fairly long transportation may be involved. Every day divers around the world look at Dan as the diving safety organization that it is. So be part of the community and dive safely with Dan. If you're not a member yet, please join Dan today. Dan is after all there for you and its services can only be made available and remain available through the support you provide. Follow the links below to become a DAN member and what you might not know is that there is a DAN mobile app. Go to Google Play for the Android or the equivalent iPhone program stores and look for DAN mobile app. That is basically having Dan in your hands, which allows you to then chat and communicate and even get access to information and advice regarding diving injuries. So download it now to make sure you have that resource available to you. If you'd like to learn more about what Dan does for diving safety, again, look for the Dan Southern Africa YouTube channel and the Dan blog for the latest news so you don't miss anything. To learn more, follow the links below and thank you for your time and ongoing support.